Try again. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Perfect. Nice to see you. Nice to you as well. Thank you. Congratulations on everything that you've accomplished this season. Really amazing. Thank you. You're fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy and wild watching myself back on TV. I'm like, oh, I said that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to talk to you all about this. Um, first, I've got to read a sponsor liner, and then I'll be right with you, okay? Sounds great. But first, this interview is sponsored by I Am Health, a shining star in the health movement across Canada. I Am Health is a national movement aimed at empowering everyone to take the next step towards HIV testing, particularly our vulnerable and underserved communities. They're making it super easy to do that as well by offering free HIV self-test kits through their website. The goal is to crank up awareness and encourage everyone to get tested. Tested is the only way to truly know your HIV status, and knowing your status opens the door to a world of support, care, and treatment, all accessible through their website. Let's also give a shout out to the incredible support behind this initiative from the MAP Center for Urban Health Solutions at St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto. So everyone, make your way to IAM.Health. It is time to champion health and wellness for all and create a brighter, healthier future together could not agree more how about you yeah. near enough right yes. nice to see you yes um you were saying before we started that you would watch yourself on canada's drag race and you can't believe some of the things you said i can't believe some of the things you said so yeah. i don't know what it must be like to watch that back yeah i was like watching and it was just so crazy to I feel like when you're in this whole competition, it is a pressure cooker. I didn't realize how much I said in that little room. Um, but honestly, I feel like lots of people did appreciate my personality for being blunt and saying it for how it is um, and making great TV. I did appreciate it. And uh, the honesty and the forthrightness and the this is who I am, take it or leave it. Uh, attitude you brought really was great TV and and refreshing to watch because I think this far into the franchise um, we know well, you know how to play the game a little bit better yeah and you could easily go in and produce yourself and make yourself be someone you're not and I found you to be very authentic um, and it was as I said refreshing yeah I think even from the beginning of like the audition process that was what really stuck out was me just really being authentically myself. Um, this was my second time auditioning. So when it comes to the first year, I was telling them what I thought they wanted to hear. And right. it's just like, it goes to show how much a person can grow within like a year, um, just with their own artistry, if you really put your mind to it. So what was the difference between the two auditions then for you? You were telling them what you thought they wanted to hear. What did you think they wanted to hear? I think I was just wanting to be like really nice and really like sweet. And um, I mean, sure, oh. that's, that's a version of me, but I don't think it was very appealing for TV. And no. then the second audition is like, hi, I'm near enough and you need me because of this, this, this. Nobody will send me home in a lip sync, like, la da 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 da. Um, and I'm happy that I'm able to like, live up to that potential um I may talk a big talk but I'm able to like back myself up which I think is another thing as the viewer to be able to see because you can be like oh okay Nira like whatever we'll wait and see and then being able to prove those people wrong who doubted me is like a really great feeling that was my journey with you I I was disarmed by your confidence and your bravado um, and then you backed it up every single time. You became the lip sync assassin of the season. Um, mm -hmm. No one can match you, I don't think, uh, when it comes to lip syncing. Um, the bravado I mentioned, is that something that you carry with you on the daily? Or is that something that you just got into competition mode and that's who you became? I feel... So you're confident. Yeah, I feel like I'm always really confident. Um, the way I grew up, I really had to mature really fast. And once I got to a place um, where I'm comfortable in life, like in Calgary and with my husband, like I'm very confident in who I am as a person and what I've achieved at the age of 22. And going into that competition, obviously you're going to go into a competition mode, which means hike that confidence up even more. And sorry, my dog is like... <laughs> okay, I've got one here that I'm, I'm praying doesn't howl. Oh, wants to come Oh, bless. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. 
this is Prince, everyone. Oh, Prince, hello, Prince. <laughs> yeah, but after this, he'll probably have to go out to the bathroom. But <laughs> anyways, continuing on, um, yeah, I think that all of us in this season were able to really put our TV hats on and be like, what can we do to make history and what can we do to make good TV? Because I think that's something that a lot of people forget is it is a reality TV show and they want those moments. People compared this season to old seasons of Drag Race. And that's like such a great thing to hear because it keeps people invested. You mentioned um, you had to grow up fast. And and I just wonder if you could share a little bit of that. Yeah. When it comes to growing up fast, I had lots of family things that happen. I do have like many alcoholics in my family and I found myself having to take care of myself a little bit um, growing up, but I did have an amazing support system. Um, I grew up in Lloydminster, so it's the border city of Alberta and Saskatchewan, and it's a very, very like conservative town. Um, And my number one thing was I need to get out of here because what happens in small towns is you see people sort of not become their authentic selves and conform into somebody that they're not. And that's the complete opposite of what I wanted to do. Um, Yeah. I'm from a small town. My dad was an alcoholic and and I look back and I I'm in a way grateful because um, having that sort of environment made me resourceful, resilient, uh, vigilant, and gave me, um, uh, qualities that have served me well going forward into my life Um, I think the worst thing that can happen to you is nothing when you're growing up and the best thing that can happen to you is maybe a rough start do you look back in this in a similar way and and realize you are the strong person you obviously are because of all these things yeah I think that's a really great way to put it is I don't think I would be where I am today if it wasn't for all of the hardships in my like past. Like I lost my aunt. Um, her name is aunt, my auntie Amy. She was like my biggest number one cheerleader and she passed away from cystic fibrosis. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just like such an eye opening to me. And I think I was like 12 or 14, anywhere between. I It's kind of, oh, she passed away in 2013. I have her card right up there. And she, um, yeah, was just the biggest supporter ever. And it really taught me to not take anything for granted and like live in the moment. And that is something that I have definitely dealt with. Even my husband, it wasn't really talked about on the show, but my husband had um, Hodgkin's lymphoma and that was another thing and it just brought back like a really big trauma response because I didn't want to lose the person that I cared about the most yes. again and now everyone like the world can see the love that we have each for each other so um it, it was beat it was stage one it was really caught fast so wow. I'm appreciative for that uh your husband you don't need to hear this is quite something <laughs> thank you so- <laughs> Thank you. Um, how did it feel to have your relationship exposed um, in a in a good way, but aired nationally? Because there's one thing about putting yourself out there. There's a totally different thing about putting your relationship out there. Yeah, I think um, when it comes to him coming onto the show, I think it showed a different side of me that people it didn't. Did, softer see. side. Yeah, I wasn't as aggressive. I was more calm. And it was so special to honestly now have this captured like forever. Mm -hmm. It's like so cool to be able to look back at this experience and have him on there with me. Everyone on the internet is obsessed with him, which I'm happy about. That's great. He's going to be at DragCon. He signed some Polaroids. It's, it's great. Um, But yeah, no, he's definitely like my number one supporter when it comes to um, my drag and my lifestyle. You can like, see it's true love and, and yeah. he tempered you. Uh, and we saw the other side of you, the softer side, as I mentioned, um, you've called it the, the more aggressive side. How did mm-hmm. your more aggressive side go over with the cast, your fellow castmates, um, on the daily things we didn't see? Um, I think honestly, when the cameras like aren't rolling, you're just kind of chill with each other. You're, mm-hmm. It's an experience that we're all in together. But like I said, if I seen opportunities to make great TV, I was going to take those. 
and I'm happy that it translated that way because it made it certainly people sorry um it just made people invested you came across um as someone and it's again another refreshing quality about you who didn't care what anyone else thought not in a mean way but in a, a confident way the way we should be um have you always been that way Yeah, I think I always definitely have been that way because even when you're growing up in high school um, and people are being rude to you and they call you gay or that F slur, it's like, okay, and? Like, that was another thing that I said. Okay, and? And I've said that for so long. It's like, sure, you can call me all of these things. You can call me gay. Yeah, that's right. Do you have anything else to add to that statement? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Um. Where you just tell them their hair looks sexy, push back, and they usually leave you alone. <laughs> um, You've been through a lot in life And uh, Drag Race certainly is another a lot for you What did you learn? Who were you when you started the race? And who are you now? I think you learn going into that competition that anything can happen. And what I do appreciate is from episode one to where I am now, you can see the growth throughout the season. You can see that I kind of, I mean, in the beginning, I felt like I wasn't like my full potential and people didn't really know who Nira was as an artist other than being like a bitch. Mm -hmm. And my runways weren't really like similar and like giving the same style. Um, But then being able to show off um, in the lip sync slay off my like performing skills that showed Bad like skills. who I am as an artist and what I love to do. Well, you're a delight, and uh, it's been such a pleasure to watch you. You really added the spice to the season, uh, and I wish you nothing but great success. Uh, Thank fingers you. crossed for you when the show airs on Thursday, and uh, I wish you much joy. Thanks for talking to me today, near enough. Thank you so much. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Bye.